fall But you remain sovereign, Lord, through it all Tides of change, they wash the land But none can shake the promises, Lord, in your hand Come on, sing it with me Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall But you remain sovereign, Lord, through it all Tides of change, they wash the land But none can shake the promises, Lord, in your hands Youth inspire, our strength will fade The time is now to sing your praise, Lord Yesterday has come and gone And to remain faithful, Lord, through it all So until I see your face Tell me bear the fruit of walking in your ways You can smile, my strength will fade The time is now to sing your praise, Lord you are in this generation, we will glorify your name to the end of time. We lift you up in this generation, Lord, we will proclaim your name forevermore. Hey! Generation to generation The vessels change But the spirit is the same Generation to generation The exploits change But the hero is the same Generation to generation I give my life To bring glory to your name Generation to generation Even my embers will light another flame oh. In this generation we will glorify your name Today Come on, I want to hear you sing it out We lift you up We lift you up In this generation, Lord, we'll proclaim your name Hey. We lift you up, we lift you Generation, we will glorify your name To the end of time We lift you up In this generation, Lord We will take your name forevermore Come on, keep singing it hey. We lift you up, we lift you Oh, in this generation You are in this generation, Lord, we'll sing your name forevermore. 
stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the way I hope you're ready to praise God this morning. We're going to sing power because our Jesus, he does have the resurrecting power over death, over hell, and over the grave. Come on. Sing Jesus. Jesus got the power over death, hell, and the grave. Jesus. Jesus got the power over death, hell, and the grave. Jesus. Jesus the death, hell, and the grave. Said he rose from the dead.
that he rose from the dead Just like he said The temple will be destroyed And I'll build it again Jesus. Woo! Hello, everyone. My name is Harold Barnes, and this is my awesome wife, Delilah. We want to welcome you, and thank you for joining us today. And we want to say happy Mother's Day to all those mothers out there. I hope that you feel loved and encouraged today. Delilah and I have had the privilege to lead the children's ministry in the Soko region of the Boston Church of Christ for over five years. And during this long, long COVID time, we'll be holding Zoom calls with the kids at 10 a.m. on Sundays. It's been a wonderful time where we talk, we share, we share Bible story, or we just connect with one another. And, and tell you what, we have an awesome and very spirited group of children in the Soko region, and it truly makes it a joy for us to lead. We also want to thank you parents for making this happen each Sunday as well. And today, through the efforts with our daughter, Lily Barnes, we put a little something together for you. Hope you enjoy it. Mommy, you're so lovely, and I love how you help me, and you're so kind, and happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mommy. I love about my mom is that she's always there for me. She takes care of me, and she's spiritual say that mom you are amazing you bring so much joy into my life you motivate me to be better you're always making sure that I'm on top of things she's the one who calls me to wake me up when my I don't wake up from my alarm um, but yeah I love you so much and thank you for bringing so much joy into my life always having a contagious laugh always being outspoken and showing me um, how to stand up for myself and how to be bold 
Um, you're amazing and I love you. One thing that I really love about my mom is the fact that she's resilient and hardworking. No matter what is going on, she is able to bounce back and persevere through it all. And she looks great doing it. <laughs> what I love about my mother is she's generous. What I love about my mother is that she never stops caring. What I love most about my mom is that she take, takes care of me and she loves me and that she helps with my dance competitions and get get helps me get ready for my dance competitions, but she also helps me to know God. One thing I like about my mom is that she is very caring and forgiving. What I love about my mom is her kind, compassionate heart and her willingness just to, to serve everybody around One her. One thing I love about my mom is that I always feel like I can talk to her whenever like she's around and she always comforts me. What I love about my mom is that she is such a servant and she's so giving and she's just so willing to drop everything just to be with someone or to give them advice or to ask them questions or I know that she goes for walks with some people and that is just so amazing to me that she gives up so much of her time just to be with people of the body and just really serve them and be with them. What I love about my mom is just how much she's instilled God's love in me um, throughout my life um, from day one. I feel like she's just taught me what it really even means to have a relationship with God and how much he loves us and um, what that looks like whether you're going through you know a great time or you're in a valley and I feel like she's just been such a catalyst for me in my relationship with God and um, she's just really taught me so much um, that I am so grateful for and I don't know what I would do without her. I love my mom, she's kind, she helps me and she's been helping me grow up um, since I was eight. And she, and she protects me whenever I did. I love about my mom because she always loving and also she always protects me and also she always forgives <coughs> me when me and my brother do bad stuff. Bye, Mommy. Bye. Yay. Wow, wasn't that awesome? We hope this has lifted your spirits and we want you to know how special you moms are. We also hope you will enjoy today's service and we thank you for being with us. So let's get things started by having you join us in a prayer. God, thank you for the way that you love us and are such our gracious Father. Mm. Today we ask you for a special blessing to be given to all those moms who may be our physical moms, our spiritual moms, or just those women who choose to love us unconditionally as you have. Mm -hmm. Please bless our time today and be with us as we get into the word. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, for just being there for us, mm -hmm. and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. to see you I want to see you open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you open the eyes of my to see you I want to see you to see you to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 open the of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes, open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes. 
eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Come on, to see you To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love Are you guys sure you've got this? Yeah. The twins are plugged in, baby's asleep. How hard can this get? We're men. Besides, I bumped into Chuck Norris at a Pizza Hut once. I think his powers rubbed off on me. Get out of here. Go on, enjoy your mommy getaway weekend. Oh, this weekend was a bad idea. You remember what happened last time we watched the kids? I'm not a pinata. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need help. Warning, use of this product may alter your perception of reality. <sighs> All right, everything looks the same. This is a joke. Guys, guys. Guys, it's like the Sahara in this cup. Can somebody hit me with some juice? <laughs> and listen, pulp, no pulp, doesn't make a difference to me. You're the ones dealing with the diaper. Mom goggles. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, sweetie, I need you to sit on your bottom. Listen to Daddy. You sit on your bottom, okay? Daddy's gonna come get you. Don't do, do, move. Do, 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 do. Don't dance. Just sit on your bottom. Daddy's gonna come get you. Ah. 
whoa, 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 whoa! Don't you try to stop me. Baby made a poopy, yes you did, dude. Where are your mom goggles? They wouldn't fit over my hazmat suit. Take that. Oh, oh. You're so cute, bitch. Huh? And then the little boy <laughs> rocked his mommy. Oh, I love you. Forever. I like you, too. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Oh, well you take it and you fold it from corner to corner. No, I'm, I'm asking the question, how do moms do all of this? How do they handle it all? Well, maybe they have goggles we don't know about. It's as if God gave moms a special way of looking at things, you know? Okay, who taught you servanthood? Who modeled grace? Who gave you a taste of what God's love could look like? My mom, Mr. T, and my mom. Anyway, I, I just think God gave moms a special way of looking at things. Hey, honey. Hey, how's it going at home? It's all good. Guess you could say I'm um, starting to catch a glimpse of what your world looks like. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Mama. Hold on, your daughter wants to say something to you. I did mama. She says she misses you. And she realizes how important you are in her life. And she doesn't know how you do it. And she knows that she can't make it without you. She said all that, huh? I don't know if she said it. But it's what I wanted to say. And I should have said it a lot sooner. I thank God for you. The twins. Um, it, it was nothing. Um, I, we, we have to go, okay? Um, lo love you, Mommy.
captives came back into Zion from their freedom came a scheme while the city When our, when our souls were like the desert, were like the desert and we stumbled on the street and found revival, found revival in the water, we became, we became like men who dream. And yes, our minds yes, were filled with laughter, filled with laughter and, our and our songs rushed like the street like where we washed our sorrows under. said among the nations there's a god who shares our dreams the spirit moves our generation shed your tears and fill the stream we are shedding tears that flood the thirsty waters God has done, God has done great, things among great things among us, and every eye, every eye now shines a gleam, a, a spark of light reveals the wonder, we became, we became like men who dream, it shall be said among the nations, there's a God there's who a God shares who our dreams, dream. the Spirit moves our generation. Shed your tears and fill the stream. Who dreamer? We are shedding tears that flood the thirsty waters. Who dreamer? We are planting seeds of faith. Who dreamer? So. Welcome back to the Boston Church of Christ. My name is Cash McCarg, and it is so great to be back together again today. And I'm excited to celebrate Mother's Day. You know, Mother's Day is such a great day where we get a chance to reflect and celebrate and honor the mothers in our life. You know, I am blessed. I've got a great mom myself that raised me to 
to, and she loved me dearly and she put up with me through all the craziness. You know, can I get an amen for all those who once they got a little older in life, called their moms and said, mom, I'm sorry that I put you through so much struggle as a child. But that's one of the reasons that we love moms. We love moms because they're there for us. They, they, they're there for us when we're being total knuckleheads in life. And that's the reason why we celebrate them today. Happy Mother's Day. You know, today could also be a reminder for many of us and a sad reminder of, of our moms who've maybe passed on and, and aren't with us anymore today. And, and to you, I want to say Happy Mother's Day and that we're here with you. And we, we honor them, but we also we suffer with you. We know that's tough. And for others, we know that maybe you didn't have a great relationship with your mom. And so today you feel conflicted and it's hard for you. But, but you know, no matter where you are today, I want you to know that you can celebrate, that you can honor God and you can honor the so many great moms that we have right here in the church family. We've got some amazing moms here. You know, it's usually this point in our church service where I would have all the moms stand up and you would, we would clap and we would celebrate and we would yell and scream and we would give you the ovation that is proper. And today I want you to know that from our living room and in our hearts, we are doing that with you today, moms. We're so grateful for you. We're so thankful for the way that you've loved us and you've cared for us and you've been there, not just for your own children, but for so many others in the congregation. You know, I also want to take a moment just to recognize all the ladies who maybe couldn't be moms, or at least not biological moms, but have been moms to so many, and aunties and grandmoms to so many children that weren't necessarily their own, but you treat them like your own. You see, I believe that motherhood is one of the great reflections of God, and that's the title of our message today. It's moms, reflections of God, reflections of God. That's what I believe moms are. You know, moms, you may not have known this about moms. I'm sure you have, but if you didn't, I want you to know that moms have superpowers. Moms can do things that are superhuman, and we've all witnessed these things in our life at different times. I watched my mom do things as a child when I was a child that I couldn't believe, right? Even recently, you know, my, my wife asked me to get the kids some dessert one night. And, and so, and she was, she was about 20 feet away in another room. And I said, sure. And I, I went into the pantry and, and as I'm digging through the pantry, trying to find my kids some dessert, she, she yells, she said, Hey, Cash, she says, don't give them those. And I said, don't give them what? She says, don't give them Pop-Tarts. I'm actually going to have them eat those another day this week for their dessert. Give them something else. And I thought to myself, how did she know I was going to give my kids Pop-Tarts for dessert? She's in another room, nowhere around. But you know, that's where moms live right there. Not only do they have super, you know, superhuman uh, uh, powers, but they also are always thinking ahead. They're always trying to land the family, right? They're always trying to make sure the details of our life are worked out. That's just one reason that moms are so awesome. And you know, if, if we're all very honest with ourselves today, we wouldn't be who we are today without moms in our life. You know, Isaiah chapter 66, the Bible says in verse 13, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. Think about that passage for a second. This passage is saying that the same way that, that, that a mom comforts her child, this is the same kind of comfort that God gives us. You see, when God was, when, when the Bible was being written, when they wanted to compare the kind of love that God has for us, he compared it to a mother comforting her child. You know, that's just true. You know, moms are, are filled with grace. In our household, this is the way it is. This is the way it is in a lot of households, right? And in, for, for, in our household, I tend to bring a little bit more truth than grace sometimes. But you know, the truth is, is that Maria also brings a lot of grace in our family. We need that. You know, it's comfort. They bring, they bring that warmth that we all need in life. 
And God, God compares that same warmth that he has to moms. Isaiah 49, verse 15, it says, Can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? Right? The, the, the Bible right here is making this obvious statement that, and, and in the same way, the writer is comparing the fact that and, and, and if moms don't do that, God will definitely never forget you. God will always be there for you. He will always comfort you. You see, moms are a bit of a reflection of God. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. We're going to get into the scriptures together today. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 16, we're going to read about the very beginning uh, of when Mary is finding out that she's become a mom and she's, we're going to, we're just going to read a little bit here in the story. Read along with me in verse 16. It says, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about the, uh, told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. I love this story right here. You know, this is the birth of Jesus. And these shepherds find out that the Messiah has been born and they go down to visit the Messiah. And as they're there visiting, they're saying all these great things about the baby and, and about Jesus. And, and the Bible says right here that Mary just treasured all those things and that she stored all those things up in her heart. You know, further down in the same chapter, down in verse 47, Jesus is a little bit older now. He's 12, This is 12 years later. He's, a, he's, a, he's turned into a young man. And in verse 47... Uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus stayed back at the temple when his parents had already left and, and they had become worried because they didn't know where they had left him at. And they figure out he's back at the temple. He's talking with the teachers in the temple. In verse 47, it says, everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Point number one, like God, moms have big hearts. Like God, moms have big hearts. You know, I love these stories because one of the emphasis that you see here in both of these stories is that Mary is watching her child, Jesus, grow up. And all the little things that are going on, all the things that she feels proud of, it says that she's storing those things up in her heart. You know, a mother's heart for her children is incredible. You know, sometimes I remember, especially when my kids were even younger, I can remember my kids drawing all these pictures. And you know, the other truth is, is that when they're really little, their pictures really aren't all that great. They're not. Okay, let's just be real for a second. They're like scribbles on a page. But have you ever seen a mom? react to that little child when the child comes running up and says, look, mommy, look what I drew for you. Every mom looks at that thing and she says, wow, this is incredible, you know, and they will celebrate the child. And, and before you know it, your whole refrigerator is just plastered with pictures that in my opinion are below average. Okay. I, I can do better than these pictures. But there's something about a mom that just treasures her children. 
She's got a big heart. You know, it wasn't very long. I remember walking into my door and my children were just a few years old and the refrigerator, there was no more room on the refrigerator. And I walked into our house one day and there was a whole wall just plastered, plastered with art from the children. And my wife was beaming. Maria said, look at the wall I created of all the children's artwork. And as, and as I looked at the wall, I thought to myself, why did you do this to our wall? But she loved it. She had such a huge heart. She loves her children. You know, we've all seen this in different ways. I mean, go to the soccer field on Saturday morning and watch the moms cheer on their children as they play soccer. You know, they don't even have to score in the right goal. They can score on the wrong goal and moms are cheering and they're just loving it. They're cheering on their kids because they have huge hearts for their children. That is the way that moms are built. I've seen this. You've seen this. We've all seen this. And did you know that that's exactly the way God feels about us too? That is a reflection of how God feels about his children. You know, the Bible says that when he created us in his image, the Bible says that he took a step back and he realized that what he created was good. God loves us. We are made in his image. He has a huge heart for you. And he has a huge heart for me. You know, even though the world was eventually broken and it was filled with sin, God still feels deeply for each and every one of us. The Bible says things like he has numbered the very hairs on our head. Think about that for a second. Why would he do that? The Bible says he's written our name on the palm of his hand. Why would he do that? The Bible says that he knit us together in our mother's womb. He literally put us together. He created us. He loves us. And if all that weren't enough, he provided a sacrifice. Not just any sacrifice, but the ultimate sacrifice his one and only begotten son. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, the Bible describes it like this. It says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whose God is, whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, right? What is this passage saying to us? This passage is saying that God has a huge heart for you and for me. Do you see God's heart in this passage? Do you see the way that he cares about us? You know, too often we fall into this trap of, of thinking that God is just the eye in the sky. He's just wagging his finger at us all the time. And he's just, he's just looking for a way to judge you and send you to hell. You know, that's actually not the heart of God. The Bible actually teaches that we are by nature objects of wrath. That left up to our own devices, hell is exactly where we'll end up. But that God had a rescue plan. That God's heart for his, his people is so big that he provided a rescue plan in his son, Jesus. And then he sent Jesus to model the life that he wants us to live on earth. And then when Jesus had modeled that life, he, he provided for us a sacrifice that would allow for us to have all of our sins forgiven and allow for us to dwell with God in eternity. You see, God isn't in the business of wanting to send people to hell. He wants to bring you to eternity. He wants to bring you to eternity. If God is for you, who can stand against you? This is about where you put your confidence. 
Are you putting your confidence in the one true, awesome, and holy God? Or are you putting your confidence in something else? You know, God spared everything. Or excuse me, he didn't spare anything for us. Excuse me. He, he, he was unwilling to, to, to he, he left nothing unturned, no stone unturned. He did everything he could to make sure we had an opportunity to know him. He fights for us. And so why would we put our confidence in anything else? Do you see God's heart for you today? Do you see his heart for you today? Like moms, God has a big heart. And like God, our moms are a reflection of that. Let's keep reading John chapter 2, verse 1. John chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, on the third day, a wedding took place. Now, this is a cool story, okay? This is what is known as Jesus' first miracle. Although, I kind of question that. You'll see why in a second. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman. Now understand that when Jesus uses this word woman, he doesn't mean it the way that people mean it today. This was actually a respectful way to address his mom. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to his servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the, the water that had been turned into wine, and he did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. Jesus what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of his signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is a really cool story. This is an amazing story. And of course, you know, it says right here that this was the very first of his signs through which he had performed in front of his disciples to reveal his glory. And that was a really special moment. But honestly, I think that maybe Jesus may have had a miracle or two before this that his mom got to witness. Because if you read the story, Mary knew that Jesus was capable of fixing this problem. And, and she, she knew there was a miracle waiting. And Jesus is like, Mom, my time hasn't come yet. And she just says, okay, servants, just do what he tells you to do. She had complete trust that her son would take care of it. Point number two, like God, moms expect the best of you. Like God, moms expect the best of you. I, I love this story. You know, they're at this wedding. Now understand a, a, a wedding, a Jewish wedding in this day was a, a, was a week long celebration, right? This was not a, a few hour celebration or a one day. This, this celebration would have lasted an entire week and they would have been expected to provide wine throughout the week to all the guests. And this would have been a huge disgrace to the bridegroom and his bride if they would have run out of wine before the, the celebration was over. And so Mary sees this. She has a moment where she realizes we've got to solve this problem. She looks to Jesus. She says, Jesus, it's your time. And he says, I don't know if it's my time. And she says, look, just do what he says to do. And Jesus does this incredible miracle where he turns water into wine. And it's in this moment the disciples put their faith in Jesus. This is a really awesome moment in the Bible, where we get a chance to see Jesus's miracles at work. But you know, Jesus, Jesus, he, he was an obedient son to his mom, even though he was the son of God. And this is, there's something to be said about this, that, you know, our moms expect the best of us, but you know, God expects the best from us. 
Not, not that we're going to be perfect, right? I, I say this all the time. We, God does not expect perfection. He does expect your whole heart. And, uh, you know, I, I think so often we can get worried about, you know, are we, are, we, are we doing all the right things? Are we doing all the wrong things? But God is actually really interested in you giving your whole heart. In fact, that when we give our whole heart to God, all the different things fall into line. You ever notice that about life? That when you're wholehearted in your walk with God, everything seems to fall into order. Because God is constantly helping to order our life. It's only when we start to pull our hearts back from God and we don't give him our best that we start to experience the difficulties in repentance, that we start to deal with the consequences of our sin. You know what I'm talking about? You know, I remember a time, uh, I was 18 years old. This was probably just a few years before I'd become a Christian. And I worked at the racetrack. My parents trained racehorses my whole life growing up. And, and I worked at the racetrack after high school. And, uh, and I, was, I was there and I was at work one day and I was talking to a friend of mine. And as I'm talking to this friend of mine, I'm just letting the swear words just flow right out of my mouth. And that's just the way I talk. That's the way that I used to talk all the time. And I remember there was this one time as I was having a conversation with, with this friend of mine, I heard the voice behind me. And she said, excuse me. And it was my mom standing right behind me. As I am just letting the curse words fly. I mean, I, I, don't even want, I don't even want to give you the abbreviations. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't want to turn around. And I slowly turned around. And, you know, she didn't even have to say much. As I start to go, oh, I, I'm so sad. I start to apologize. And she just says, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I felt about this big in that moment. I remember, and I was like, man, I wish there was like a good excuse, but she caught me red-handed. And, and I remember the disappointment that was in her voice. And I, I just felt like the smallest person on earth. And she didn't have to say much at all, but I remember her saying, so this is the way you talk when I'm not around. And I couldn't even deny it. I was like, you know, yeah. I'm sorry. And I just apologized. And I remember I learned a lesson that day that, that the way I talk, the way I act, all these different things, they reflect on my mom. You know, they, those things, I either honor or dishonor my mom and my dad for that matter, by the way I live my life and I act and the way I, the, my speech, the things I say. And the disappointment that she felt wasn't so much that I had made a mistake because we all make mistakes, but it was the fact that she knew this is the way I was living when she wasn't in my presence. And I want to I want to encourage us today because I think this is a battle that we also face with God. You know, the same thing is true that God expects the best of us. And the way that we act, the way that we live, the way that we think, the way that we talk honors or dishonors God. You see, the way that we are is a reflection of God, right? The idea that we would carry the name of Christ, that we would say, I'm a disciple of Jesus, but then not act like a disciple of Jesus is a reflection of God to the world. And, and it's very confusing. It's, it's hypocritical. This is the reason why it's so upsetting to God when we aren't acting and living the right way. You see, I believe the glory of God is at stake in our life. The way that we live, you know, I remember one time when I was a young disciple of Jesus, my campus minister says, you might be the only Christian little Christ that somebody ever really sees. And so you've got to live in a way that reflects Jesus. You know, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, listen, listen to what Jesus says about us. He says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. That they may see your good deeds. And glorify your Father in heaven. 
You see, right here, Jesus is explaining a, a concept to us as disciples that it's not just about the things that we say we are, right? I, I remember one time somebody said, you can't stand in a garage and call yourself a car. The same way you can't stand in a church and call yourself a Christian if you're not living like one. You see, as disciples of Jesus, it's important that, that we give God our best. We, we, can't, we don't want to live our lives in a way where, where we say one thing, but we live like another. We don't want to be hypocrites. We want to be people who are, are always trying our best, giving God our best and giving God our hearts. The Bible says right here that Jesus, Jesus says that, that the way we live our life is a light to people. Think about that. It's, it's a light. It's a city on a hill, right? That's meant to, to resemble hope. That's meant to, that people are supposed to be able to look at us and say, there's still some hope. You know, this world needs some hope right now, right? That's what people need. People need Jesus. They don't need all these other fix it. They don't need the government to fix their problems. They need God to fix their problems. They don't need money to fix their problems. They need God to fix their problems. They don't need families or children or wives or husbands or careers. All these things can be great, but those won't fix your problems. This week, I'm not sure if you read, but uh, the one of the wealthiest people in the world, Bill and Melinda Gates, announced that they were getting a divorce. Now, look, I don't know them. I don't know their life. I don't know what's going on in their life. And so I'm not going to pass judgment on them. But here's what I did notice. Some of the wealthiest people in the world couldn't have their marriage work out with all the money in the world. What does that teach you? What does that show you? That the things this world tells us to put our trust in and our hope in, it's empty. It's empty. The only thing that can help fix our problems, the only thing that can cure us of our sin, the only thing that can save our marriages, the only thing that can help us raise kids that love God, the only thing that can help us live this life and make it till the end with Jesus is God. And we've got to live a life that says that. We need to live a life that reflects Jesus. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see, that they may be able to look at your good deeds, the way you live and glorify your father in heaven. It's so important. Let's read one more passage here. Turn with me to John chapter 19. In verse 25, it says, Near the cross of Jesus. So this is at the very end of his life. He's about to, to face death on a cross. He's already on it. It says in verse 25, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. His mother's sister, Mary, and the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Point number three, like God, moms deserve honor. You know, I love this part of the crucifixion story. You know, obviously this isn't the whole purpose of Jesus dying on a cross, but I, I think it's amazing to me that while he's about to breathe his last breath, he wants to honor his mom. He wants to take care of his mom. He wants to make sure his mom is going to be well cared for. And so he commissions one of his closest disciples, John, who's referred to as the disciple that he loves, to make sure that he is going to be taken care of or that she'll be taken care of and given the honor that she deserves. You know, Jesus never did the bare minimum at anything in his life. Even while he's on a cross, he's wanting to make sure that mommy is going to be taken care of. And I believe that there's something special about honoring moms today. I think there's something special about honoring moms who have worked so tirelessly and so, so, so hard their entire life to make sure that we would be taking care of. You know, my mom 
Some of you have met her. She's, she's one of the hardest working women, the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. I'm not exaggerating. I remember as a child, my mom would work two and three jobs to make sure that we could make ends meet. I remember her coming home so exhausted, needing just to go right to sleep so she could get a few hours sleep before she'd go back and work another shift. I can remember her coming home and we would have dinner. My dad would say, honey, there's dinner on the table. It's waiting for you. And she would say, I'm, I'm too tired to even eat. I'm just going to go to sleep. You know, there was a lot of nights like that. There were a lot of days like that. And I know I'm not the only one who's got a mom who sacrificed and was there for us and did all these different things. And, and I believe that it, it's days like today and, and probably every day that we should take time to reflect and thank the moms who God put in our life. But you know, even more than moms, God deserves honor. God deserves honor. He deserves glory. He deserves a life of his children that will honor and glorify him. You know, uh, for, for, for us as a church, we believe that the teaching uh, doctrinally sound uh, faith is important. We believe that we need to make sure we teach people the truth. And we, we do that well. I, I believe that firmly as a church, that we, we, we live by truth. We believe in the truth. When we help people become Christians, we tell them, you got to do it the way the Bible teaches. You can't, just, you can't just do it the way you want. You got to do it the way the Bible teaches. And we teach things like you got to put your faith in Jesus and you got to repent of your sins. You got to get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. You got to live a faithful life. These are th some of the things that we teach people to become disciples. But, you know, people get baptized, we get baptized, and I think for some of us, we forget what the next goal is. You see, when we're trying to figure out our relationship with God, the goal is simple. I just need to get right with God. I need to, I need to repent. I need to get baptized. And it's a glorious day. This last Saturday, we got to celebrate two people who became disciples of Jesus. Donald became a disciple of Jesus, and Barbara was baptized into Christ as well, right in my driveway. It was an incredible celebration. But that's where the party begins. That's the very beginning of the race. That's the, you know, that's the beginning of the marathon. And for some of us, we forget what the goal is of our faith. And that's to give God honor with our lives, to glorify him. You know, we don't want to be people who live with the mindset of what's the least I have to do. That's not a heart for God. Jesus didn't do anything with the bare minimum in mind. And he doesn't want us to do anything with the bare minimum in mind either. Jesus wants us to live our life fully for him. Jesus says that, that he came so that we could have life and have it to the full, but we only experience life to the full when we're in Christ. Our lives should be a worship of God. Let me ask you a fun question. If your life were a worship service, would people want to come to it? If your life were a worship service, would people be attracted to it? You know, I believe that we have to live a life that worships God, that honors God. You know, we're, we're not the kind of Christians that, that just go around and following a bunch of rules. That's not who we are. And that's not who God wants you to be. God wants you to be a disciple who's actively seeking him. And because you've got a heart that wants to please him and wants to seek him, of course you obey him. That's part of it, right? The same way that I want my children to obey me, but I want my children to live a life where they think everything's just about obedience, I want them to obey me because they love me and they care about me and they want, they want to bring honor to my name in the same way that's the way God wants us to live, where we bring honor and glory to God. Let me ask you, how are you doing today bringing honor and glory to God in your life? Think about your, your, think about your life. Think about the way you talk, your speech. Think about, you know, just the different things that you're watching, that you're, you're letting, you're, you're, you're taking in, right? Think about all the things that you're doing with your life and the way that you're serving God. Are you bringing honor and glory to him in your life? Or are we more excited about other things in life? Let's just be honest. Are we more excited about the extracurriculars than we are about God? 
Are we more excited about sports? Are we more excited about careers? Are we more excited about the classroom? What, what, what really drives us? I pray today it's our relationship with him. Today is Mother's Day. And I am so grateful and I am so honored to be able to worship and be a part of a church family with so many great moms. I'm so honored to be married to a woman who loves me and loves our children. Maria is an incredible mom. Many of us are married to incredible moms and we have great moms who have taken care of us throughout our life. And today we will honor them and we will celebrate them. But today I also pray that we'll reflect on Christ. That we'll reflect on what he did and, and what he continues to do for us. At this time, we're going to pray and we're going to take communion together. And as we, we pray and we take the bread, which represents Jesus' body that was broken, and we drink the juice, which represents his blood that was spilled, let us reflect on him. Pray with me. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the honor that we have to come before you, to be able to pray to you, God, to be able to remember Jesus. God, we're so grateful that you provided for us reflections of who you are in our moms, God. But more than anything, we are so grateful that you provided Jesus for us, that he came and that he died and he, he, he rose again on the third day so that we could experience true forgiveness and that we could be in eternal love with you, God. Thank you so much for the way you care for us, the way that you've given us an incredible life worth living, God. And I pray that no matter where we are today, that we'll remember that you are over all things. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
of spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive To declare your victory The resurrected King Is resurrecting me By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat to all the mothers out there. I have a bunch of moms in the church. I love a lot of grandmas in the church, but I want to say an especially big Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Mary McNair. Happy Mother's Day, mom. I love you. I had to take the opportunity, but thank you everyone for coming to church this morning. Thanks to everyone who put the service together. I want to say a big thanks to um, Cash who preached an amazing sermon about moms. I want to direct you always to a few links in the description. Um, our first link is for our connect card. If you're new, if it's your first time here, please press that link and it'll get you connected with some Christians in the area. If you're a member of our church, please uh, click the link for online giving where you can help support the spread of the gospel all around the South Coastal area. And lastly, if you have young kids at home, please click the link in the description for Kids Church. It's fun. It's interactive. You won't want to miss it. And please join us here again next week. We're here every Sunday on Facebook or YouTube at 1030 a.m. Can't wait to see you there. Happy Mother's Day.